I always start here with the 10-step process, like I talked to you guys about earlier, that here's this personal economic model thing in the middle. It's a teaching tool. I want to introduce you to it right away. That's what I say to my prospects. We are going to take a much deeper dive in this throughout every step of the process along the way. But because of that, I want to give you this initial 40,000 foot view so that you're familiar with it. Okay? And I always ask, okay, we want to role play a little bit? Sure. Okay, perfect. So Crystal, I have a question for you. And I, in my office, I have a screen that faces me and I have a screen that faces the prospect. If we're on Zoom, obviously I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Crystal, have you ever seen that picture before? Mm -mm. Okay. Does it remind you of anything? Does it look like anything? What comes to mind? Plumbing. Plumbing. Ding, ding, ding. If we're in the family feud, that is the number one answer. Yeah. Right? <laughs> hey. Da, 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 da. Whatever somebody says, you figure out how to you know, tell them, yeah, that is what it looks like. Right? Okay. Well, the, the last question I'll ask you right now, Crystal, is does it look like it was just thrown together or does it look like it was built with a purpose? It looks like it's built with a purpose. With I'm a purpose. not quite sure what, but it looks like it's pretty sturdy. Uh, pretty sturdy. Okay. Well, you know, that's a, it's called your personal economic model. I'll use my little draw tool here. And let me just get this guy out of the way. There we go. So your personal economic model, like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you see, I want to show this to you because everybody has one of these. And the people who take the time to understand what the moving pieces are, and how they're integrated and coordinated together, they will have a better understanding of how it works. Better understanding leads to more control. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Agreed. When you have more control of a set of circumstances, it typically ends up working more efficiently and better off, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you said something about, boy, it looks pretty sturdy. Mm -hmm. Throughout this process, Crystal, let's, let's figure out how sturdy your personal economic model is. Uh -oh. you want to do you want to look at that sure. I mean you're in my office to figure it out right? <laughs> all right cool. let's go all right right all right so I just want to walk you through okay so right here income right we made it look like water because money and water have some common characteristics they both just have a natural flow to them right mm -hmm. so income that's the source of the money or the water if you will it comes in like this and it comes into this big tank that tank is so big compared to the others crystal because it represents all of the money that you will earn over your entire lifetime okay. big number right yeah let me ask you, if, if we determined how big that number is, which we will do before you leave the office, and I offer to write you a check today for that amount, that'd be nice, right? Oh, yes. Okay? Yeah, that'd be amazing. Go see the grandbabies. Okay? A few million dollars at least, right? Would you treat that big check any differently than you do your weekly or monthly paycheck? Mm -hmm. How would you treat it differently? I would take that big one and I would invest it. I would, make, I would be able to do so much with it. Oh, That's okay. my whole life savings. That's your whole life savings, yeah. right? Well, see, Crystal, what we have to understand is whether you get one check or whether it comes in on a regular basis, it's the same amount of money. So we want to treat that monthly cash flow in the same fashion that you would that big lump sum. Hmm. That makes sense? That rings true? Okay. Unfortunately, I forgot my checkbook at home, so you're going to have to continue to work and go into the office and get paid, all right? But like we said, money comes in like this, comes in as cash flow. And before you can do anything with those dollars, Crystal, they have to go through this bronze thing. That's called the tax filter. Now, when I ordered this personal economic model from, from like the catalog online, Amazon, I ordered the one that didn't have the tax filter on it, <laughs> right? But lo and behold, they came direct from the factory with that thing bolted on there. From A to Z. Okay, there's no other option. <laughs> okay. So some money has to go to the IRS, and you live in New York, so a bunch of money is going to the state of New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you see your after-tax dollars hit this thing. It's called the lifestyle regulator. What that represents, Crystal, is there is a tug of war happening in your house, mm -hmm. and that is between your current lifestyle desires which are insatiable. We're human beings. We want to spend all of our money here and now, right? Mm -hmm. I want that new car. I want a new pair of Air Jordans. I want whatever it might be, okay? I just won $10 because I got Air Jordan mentioned in this session, so. <laughs> and that's constantly you fighting the did. fact that we have to set aside some money for your future lifestyle requirements, okay? So, like I said, this is constantly in a state of tug of war in your house, mm -hmm. like everybody's house. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if this thing was set to the American way, it would go up to 105%. Correct. 100% of our after-tax dollars get spent, and we put another five on credit cards. Yeah. Know anybody like that, Crystal? Not me. Not you? No. Correct answer. But you know some other people. I know other yeah, yeah. people. All right. So in working together, if we could get this thing dialed into, you know, 75, 80%, that would still allow you to have a great lifestyle today. But it would also have you set aside a significant amount of money for your future lifestyle so that you can have a great lifestyle that you want mm. in retirement. Does that sound pretty good? That sounds good. And when you save money, those dollars are going to hit this diverter. What that means is you just have a decision or a choice. And that is, do you want to put money into this risk tank, investments, mm -hmm. and or do you want to put money into this safe tank? Mm. You see, the fundamental difference between these two is over here in the risk tank, money can go up like this, and it can go down. That's the nature of investments. Right. Okay. Ever had any money go down on you yes. before? Yes. Yeah. Did you like that feeling? No. No. Okay. You can also put money into this green tank. That money can only go up. It can't go down. The only way it could go down is if you actually take the money out. So my goal, Crystal, is to get you to what I call position A. Position A I define like this. You have enough money in these two tanks, right? And I'm going to clean this up. So that when you decide to stop working and that tank disappears, mm. you can start taking money out of these two tanks via these little distribution valves and support a future lifestyle that's on par with your current lifestyle, adjusted for inflation, and have your money last at least through life expectancy, and leave some money to somebody or some organization that you want to leave some money to. I would like that. Position A. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's then where I would, that's when I would also um, incorporate the four questions, mm -hmm. right? And okay, how much money do you need to be putting into these tanks so you can get to position A? Mm -hmm. What rate of return do you have to earn? When can you retire? And then I explain what I do by saying this. Just imagine, Crystal, this little bolt right here wasn't screwed in all the way conceptually, mm -hmm. or this one, or this one, and there was some money leaking out of your system here, mm. and you didn't know it was happening. Would you want me to point it out to you? Absolutely. That's what I do. That's I help good. people find the money that they're losing That's unknowingly good. and unnecessarily. That's good. And so, and then I go into the, there's five big ones. Now, we, we talked when we first met. Do you remember what those five major wealth transfers are? Well, I think that you said it was a mortgage, right? And then you said qualified taxes and qualified plans. And then you said college and major capital purchases. Boom. I mean, boy, you're, we're going to get along great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, good memory. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I do position A. Mm. 